Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Actually, that's much more people than I expected in the last day, in the last hours. Thank you very much for your patience and your powers. As already been announced, I'm Vlad from Z Market, CEO and founder. Uh, I spent the last 12 years, as I actually recently realized, in the gaming industry. Uh, I became number one private seller of games in the world. We sold already around 20 million of digital game copies, 6 million last year. The second project we built two years ago was Skins.Cash, a platform to trade in-game items. In those couple of games which allow it to happen, we already traded almost 30 million of those virtual items in trading 50 to 60,000 items per day. Uh, the last and the most successful project is D-Market, uh, which I will tell you a little bit more later. Uh, my very good friend Mo, he, who I believe could be probably somewhere around for the next three to four minutes, invited me here to share some insights from the gaming industry where I spent most of my productive life. I honestly believe I see and I work with it, and I netted dozens of millions of dollars working with it, and this is something I can share with you and to help you better understand what is hidden inside of there. For me, it all started a very long time ago. That's actually the first game I've ever played. It was released when I was five. I was playing first when I was maybe 10 to 11, and since then, games became my passion. Um, this is a true art of 21st century, and that's a very, very fast-growing multi-dollar business industry. Uh, me, myself, in early 2005, uh, realized then back there in Ukraine, where I was born and raised in Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, uh, licensed and official computer games costed like three to four times less than uh, abroad or in America. At that point of time, we already didn't need any box to be traded. There was all about the code inside the box, which I could easily sell on different websites from eBay to anything else. So that's how it all started to be a business. Right now, I have two successful companies, and which netted dozens of millions of dollars, and third one going even faster. That's when the hobby became a business, and the passion started bringing money. Uh, we launched the market almost one and a half year ago. It's a marketplace, a platform, and a technology which actually allows gamers all over the planet to trade their items from any game on any platform. Uh, we work a lot with AAA partners from Unity to Ixola. We connect the games. We trade uh, virtual items uh, with 20 plus games by end of this year. We have now around half a million of users, so everything is going right as expected. I totally understand that there were a lot of speeches today about different opportunities uh, in the blockchain era. Uh, from finance to banking to logistics and anything else. But what I know and what I can share is the gaming industry. Uh, it's growing very fast and it gives us a lot of opportunities to invest and to make money. Right now, at least from what I have seen, there are a lot of uh, industries, projects, and products where blockchain is used where we need it, and actually where we probably do not need it to be used. But it became a very, very trendy thing. Uh, you probably won't gonna believe me, but I consulted two very big fashion firms, how they can use blockchain in their distribution models, in their sale models, and such. So blockchain is even in the fashion industry already. Uh, today, most of the projects and money and turnover is focused around banking, finance, service industries. But uh, what I can clearly see is that another top rising industry, gaming industry, is a perfect fit right after finance or payments. So in the world right now, two perfect fitted industries is payments, finance, and gaming industry is perfect fit for the blockchain, and I'll explain why. Um, as I already told you, we're trading a lot of virtual items. We actually build a platform, a technology, we work with the gaming uh, production studios and developers. There is a huge demand 
uh, from 2.3 billion of, billion of gamers in the world to trade virtual items. It's sometimes even for me hard to realize and to accept that almost 30% of the population in the world is playing games. Believe me, like nine out of 10 kids who you probably have are already playing games and that's a growing thing. Gaming industry is going to reach $138 billion this year by news reports, and it's growing even faster. Um, in 2017, official numbers of in-game items trading were 2.4 billion, but unofficially it was 10 times more. $20 billion were tuned over around virtual items inside the game. Virtual items could be just a picture of your gun, a picture of your hat, or a picture of any badge on you. But people pay billions of dollars for that, they trade it, and then ex they expect it to work in every game on the planet. There is a huge Latin demand. As I already told you, on our project Skins Cash, we trade around 50 to 60,000 items per day. And that's just a couple of games from one company which technologically allow it to happen. The latest record, by the way, for one skin, that's a picture of a sniper weapon. Just a picture, not changing any game balance, was $60,000, six and four zeros. A person paid just to show off. Uh, probably most of you heard something about Fortnite. Uh, guys netting 200 million already, and all on in-game items, which are not tradable at the moment, in, uh, compared to CSGO and Dota. There is a huge Latin demand and uh, there is an advanced market because of a couple of things. First is a growing audience. It's growing for years and will grow for dozens of years. Because when I was 20, there were no, not so many people playing games as much as I did. Now I'm 34 and I know people uh, 45, 50, paying thousands of dollars for the items and kids are growing, they will play more, and the audience will grow eventually. Another thing, which is also in the reports of New Zoo, is a very important part, is that the percentage of gamers who pay and play increases also every year, uh, and that's a lot. And the third and the last, that's what I learned from DMarket ICO, which we did last year, we raised $19 million, and what is interesting, that we attracted a lot of gamers. 60% of those gamers who attracted, they invested. So the majority of all gamers in the world, they understand what is blockchain, uh, what is Bitcoin, what is Ethereum, how to use it. So this is an, a very ready-to-go auditory. There are some risks which should be handled properly to avoid unneeded, let's say, circumstances if you are looking into the gaming industry. This is something I want to share with you. I consulted a couple of firms already in the past couple of years, and the main question for them, when they see the numbers, they want to invest, they want to use, they understand, but they are asking me what the heck is happening. Why? Why, why they pay for the items? Why they want to show off? Why they, there's so much turnover is happening around just pictures and numbers? I'm always trying to explain that this is a show off. This is a territory where people spend most of their time. This is the territory where have, they have their social network, their uh, social behavior, and their friends. And they want to show off. That's the most what is driving the revenues. However, here I'm to share another thought, and I am a gamer myself. I spent more than 10 years in the gaming industry building successful businesses, and I also invested in crypto. Something what I got there combined is here to share with you. When I was choosing projects to invest, the most thing, and this is actually what a classical investor always do, the same thing in ICOs, is checking the team. And not only the founder, but also the co-founder, uh, advisors, developers, whether they have any experience in the same industry they are building the project, whether they have ever delivered any project which lived, which attracted users. And the last but not least is whether this bunch of people who are you going to invest or thinking about it have ever heard about such words as PNL, uh, retention, 
uh, turnover, and etc. Uh, that's a question you should ask about the project you are thinking about the investment. Another very important thing, which somehow very often, and I've seen it in my own eyes, slips in ICO project is yes, uh, papers, white papers, technical white papers. Uh, if you are thinking about investments, either it's uh, utility, security, it doesn't matter. Read the papers. At least start with the white paper. It should be written in a very, very simple language. You should understand the idea. You should understand that it at least has a logic. And it should sound more or less like as a doable thing. I've seen an example in the beginning of this year when a project actually attracted like $20 million. And two weeks after, there was a Reddit post where the guys checked the white paper of the project and understood that 80% of the text was stolen from white papers of other projects. It's not a no, but this is something which should raise a flag. Another very important thing, which I've seen a lot in blockchain projects, and probably you have seen a lot in different VC projects uh, you invested or looked at, is the latent demand. There are good um, examples, like everybody wanted a car which uses electricity and not, not the gas to run. Here you go, there is Elon Musk with Teslas. Everybody wants to eat a cake and become thinner. There is a huge demand, but we will have to wait a couple more years. This is the clear example of what you should see in the project which is being created by the team you're looking at. The third part, and also a very important one, and also I don't know why, but very often, out from the thoughts of even the founders of the ICO projects, is legal transparency. I've helped like 10 different projects in the past year to resolve problems with banks, with exchanges, with lawyers, because they have never sought to prepare the documents first because doing anything, invest, uh, attracting any money and going into any public sphere. Legal transparency, legal firms, this is something what should be before any money attraction, any publicity. And I left it for the last thing is uh, the founder or co-founder of them both. Um, I've seen projects where if Give an example is the person was yesterday selling herring on the market. Today, they're doing a project uh, in the medicine industry or in uh, insurance industry. So this is something what should really raise some flags. And again, as with the team and advisors and developers, you should actually ask the questions about what is your burn rate, what is your projected growth, everything Normal investors always ask from VC projects the same due diligence should be done at least on a high level with the founders or co-founders of any crypto project you are going to invest or looking at. That's how I believe any project should be built. That's what I have seen from uh, projects before me on the scene. And that's how we built uh, DMarket. We've, took, uh, we've taken our experience, we've taken the team, we taken all the legal advices we should have taken and unfortunately paid for it, but uh, later understood that it was worth it. And that's how we built the market. Um, every evening, when, every night, when I go for sleep, I think about a couple of things. Have I done everything I could for my team, for my investors, and for my users? This is like three questions which every founder of each project which was here before me and which will be after me is 100% also asking himself. But this is something you have, also, you have also to see in his eyes and what is happening. If uh, there are some more questions and you believe in the gaming industry as much as I do, we let's discuss it over the lunch. I'm all yours and good luck to you all. Thank you.